All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you all how you can become a licensed skydiver in three steps. Uh, if this is something that you've been wanting to do, something that you've been looking into or just need a little bit more information, I'm going to bring it to you right here, right now. Keep on watching. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Prop Zone. My name's Scott Schumacher. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on everything that is skydiving. A little bit about myself. I've been a pilot for eight years and I've been a skydiver for four. I have a USPA coach rating and hold a C license with a little over 400 jumps. Today I'm gonna teach you how you can become a licensed skydiver in three easy steps. Now, step number one, what I recommend is finding the closest drop zone near you and signing up for a tandem skydive. This will get you acclimated to the extreme conditions and give you a better idea if it's for you. The easiest way to do this is to Google skydiving near your city and what you will see is a list of drop zones that are closest to you. One thing that I recommend when choosing a drop zone is to ensure that they are USPA sponsored. Now USPA stands for United States Parachute Association. Think of this like having a better business bureau rating for your business. It shows you that that specific drop zone upholds themselves to USPA standards. There are numerous drop zones in the United States that are not USPA sponsored. However, that does not mean that they are unsafe drop zones. Also remember, most drop zones can accommodate you for a tandem skydive. However, not all drop zones can accommodate you with an accelerated free fall program. Now, you don't necessarily have to do a tandem prior to taking an accelerated free fall program. My drop zone, for example, Skydive Lone Star here in Luling, Texas, allows you to take a first jump course and then we will proceed to assist you with two accelerated free fall instructors on your first jump, which means you do not have to do a tandem or in some cases a training tandem to start the accelerated free fall program. Once you've located a drop zone, there's two questions that I'd like you to ask when you call them. I'd like you to ask if they offer an accelerated free fall or AFF program and if they are currently USPA sponsored. Now, both of these bits of information you can find out on their website. Most drop zones will put this information up there. Try to find yourself a drop zone that answers yes to both of those questions within a reasonable driving distance to you. Okay, great. Now you found the closest drop zone to accommodate your needs. The next thing we're gonna do is stop calling it a drop zone and start calling it a DZ. Now, keep in mind, even though you don't necessarily need to do a tandem skydive to start an accelerated free fall program, some drop zones or DZs will actually require you to do that. It is not required by law, it is just required by some DZs. I recommend that you do at least one tandem skydive prior to signing up for an accelerated free fall program to get you acclimated to the extreme conditions and to see what you're getting yourself into. Whenever you call the drop zone of your choice, you will be greeted by what's called manifest and Manifest pretty much just oversees and manages the drop zone operations from scheduling tandems, scheduling accelerated free fall students, and um, manifesting who is gonna be getting on the airplane. They can answer any questions that you might have and either A, get you scheduled for your tandem skydive, or B, if you do not want to do a tandem skydive and they do offer an accelerated free fall program, they can get you signed up for that as well. Once you're scheduled, you're gonna have a specific time and date that you're gonna arrive at the DZ for either your tandem skydive or your first jump course. Now, like I said, I highly recommend that you go ahead and do a tandem skydive prior to doing the first jump course and the accelerated free fall program. When you first show up to the DZ, you're gonna go up to Manifest and let them know that you're there for your tandem skydive. They will get you checked in. They will assign you a tandem instructor. You will receive a safety brief. They will get you geared up. You will get on Manifest to be able to get on a load to do your jump. And then technically you're not going to have to do anything except any special instructions per your tandem instructor. Now, once you have got your safety brief, once they got you geared up, you're assigned your instructor, they told you what to do and what not to do, 
all you're doing is waiting for your turn to get on the airplane. Once your tandem skydive is complete, you will have a better idea if becoming a licensed skydiver is for you or if you're good with one and done. All right, guys, now we're moving on to step number two. Congratulations, you just completed your first tandem skydive and you love it. Now you want to move on and become a licensed skydiver. Well, step number two is getting signed up for an accelerated free fall program. And because you made sure that the drop zone that you went and did your tandem at offers an accelerated free fall program, the transition is going to be nice and easy. So the first thing that I recommend is go ahead and sign up for a USPA membership. And like I said, that stands for United States Parachute Association, and they are our governing body for skydiving and parachuting. This membership will be the foundation of all licenses and ratings that you will receive in the future. AFF stands for Accelerated Freefall, and it's a standard training course to acquire solo jumper status. Once you complete the Accelerated Freefall program, you're not yet a licensed skydiver. There's still a few more things that you need to do. However, AFF is a big step. You don't want to take it lightly. The Accelerated Freefall program starts off with an FJC, otherwise known as a first jump course. The first jump course, or FJC, is a six to eight hour class that consists of ground training and a written test. Once your FJC is complete, now you move on to your actual accelerated free fall jumps. These jumps consist of seven training skydives that slowly progress you to learning how to control your body in free fall. We're going to teach you the basics of falling in a stable belly to earth position. During these accelerated free fall jumps, we're going to train you how to control your body's direction, whether it be left, right in the form of 180s and 360s. We're going to teach you how to recover from an unstable body position by training you how to do front flips, back flips, and barrel rolls. And then we're also gonna train you to do what's called tracking. And tracking simply is being able to control your body in a forward motion. We are transitioning a little bit of that vertical velocity into forward velocity. Tracking, simply put, is just moving forward. Once you have completed all of these accelerated free fall jumps, you are now considered what's called solo status. That means that now you are allowed to jump by yourself or with a USPA rated coach, an accelerated free fall instructor, or anybody with a D license. All right, guys, congratulations. You just completed accelerated free fall training and now we're on our way to get our license, but there's still one more step that we need to do. And step number three to this process is completing the A license proficiency checklist. Now, the proficiency checklist, simply put, is just a checklist of things that you need to accomplish prior to receiving your USPA A license. The USPA A license is the first license that a skydiver will receive from the United States Parachute Association, and it will allow you to jump pretty much anywhere in the world. Once you've completed everything on the A license proficiency chart and have logged a minimum of 25 skydives, you are now able to apply for the, your USPA A license. Now, a little bit about the A license proficiency checklist. There are a few things that you're going to have to do. Like I said, the first one is we're going to have to complete a minimum of 25 skydives. You're also going to have to take a packing class. Among those 25 skydives, five of those you need to land accurately on a target five times within a certain distance of that target. You don't need to hit it dead center, but you need to hit it within a certain distance. You also are going to be taking a USPA written exam, which is multiple choice, and also perform a check dive with an instructor. When all of these are completed, your instructor will sign off your proficiency checklist. You can send it in with appropriate fees to the USPA, and you will now get your A license stamp on your head, and congratulations, you are now a USPA A licensed skydiver. Once all of this is completed, within a couple weeks, you're gonna receive in the mail your USPA A license, and all your hard work will have paid off. You are also going to receive a 12 month subscription to Parachutist Magazine, and you're gonna get that recurring subscription every single month, and then eventually, 
your A license number is going to be published in that magazine. So whenever you get it, hold on to it as a reminder of all the hard work that you've just done. All right, guys, I'm Scott Schumacher. Thank you for watching The Prop Zone. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. And I will be back next time with more information on skydiving. <laughs>